14 verses 1 up to 4. Now Samson went down to Temna and saw a woman in Temna of the daughters of the Philistines. So he went up and told his father and mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Temna of the daughters of the Philistines. Now, therefore, get her for me as a wife. Then his father and mother said to him, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren or among all my people that you must go and get a wife from the uncircumcised Phil Philistines? And Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord that he was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines. For at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you once again for uh, gathering us together today to listen to your word. And as we approach your throne, Lord, we acknowledge we confess our trespasses before you. We pray for the forgiveness of our sins. And may you cleanse us by the blood of Jesus, O oh Lord God, so that your spirit can freely move upon each and every one of us. And I pray, Lord, we pray that you would be the one to enlighten our hearts, enlighten our minds, so, so that we will hear your word, we will see what is not written, and we will hear what is not said in the scriptures, O oh God. And Lord... Let your spirit speak into our hearts. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, we may now all be seated. Uh, pleasant afternoon to all of you. On behalf of the church, uh, once again, I would like to welcome Tita Flor in London. Thank you for coming and joining us today. And Jen, uh, Cindy's friend, welcome to the church. Sister, okay, sorry. Thank you for coming. What's your name, sister? Christiana. Okay, welcome to God Most High Christian Ministry. And Sister Ida, uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you. Uh, welcome to God Most High Christian Ministry. And Sister Lynn, uh, we have... We have uh, Met her in, in Harlesden Park Fellowship. Thank you for coming to the church. And of course, Jack over there. Thank you for coming. I hope you'll stay, stay till the end of the service as I will pray for you at the end of the sermon. Okay? Are you happy to listen to God's word today? Okay, thank you. Okay, so as you can see, our topic for today is about God's purpose in all things. Did you remember when I said, when I said, or when I told you, one way to study God's word is to be able, for you to be able to read what is not written and to hear what is not said. Does it make sense? No doubt. <laughs> if you would not be able to hear what is not said, or if you would not be able to see what is not written, you will not grow in God's word. You will not grow in your relationship with the Lord. Okay, let's say for example, in Romans chapter 8 verse 28, and we know that in all things, work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. What are the implications or what does this verse implies? What does it say? What does, uh, what can you see here that is not written from here? Any idea? Okay. This is the most, or this is in, Top five of the most abused verses. Some people or lots of Christians quote this verse without fully understanding what is meant by it. So, as I ask you, what is being said here that is not written? What are its implications? What does it say aside from this verse? 
Let's say, for example, do you understand the question? No wonder you can't answer. <laughs> if I say implication, what does it imply? What is meant by it? If I say, if I say, uh, <laughs> how do I, how, how, how do I use a good example? If I say, if I say, I'm British, it doesn't necessarily mean my nose is uh, pointed. <laughs> what I meant by that is I have a British passport. Do you, do you agree with me? And it is so with this, if it says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, what are its implications? What does it says aside from what is written? Pag hindi pa kayo nakaintindi ng tanong ko eh. You should understand my question by now. God priority. Okay, I'll give you one example. One of its implications is in all things, God works for his purpose to take place. Where did you get that, Pastor? That's why I said, we should learn to see what is not written and we should be able to hear what is not said. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Why did I say in all things, God works for his purpose? Because it is said here, all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are the called according to his purpose. In other words, the things that happen to us would only be good when God's purpose is fulfilled. Am I right? Did you see it from here? No. That's why we should learn to meditate. And God's word says, Meditate on his word day and night. But are we, what are we meditating? Facebook. How many hours did you spend in Facebook? Oh, just three hours. Hallelujah. Three hours in Facebook, one hour in Facebook. When it comes to God's word, you can only spend five minutes to read God's word. And even if you don't understand, you don't even care at all. What does it mean? I don't know. That's not good. Okay, so another implication is if, if, if not, is that it does not make sense. If God's purpose is not fulfilled in everything or in a particular thing, it does not make sense. Are you with me? Okay, so our aim for this topic for us to see God's purpose in everything. Do you agree with me if I say God's, God has a purpose in everything? Yes. Amen? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's not easy to, to see the, the purpose of God in everything. Let's say, for example, uh, I hope Joe won't react with this. <laughs> it's not an excuse that my nose is like this. Uh, although I didn't say it's, it's, it's pointed before the accident, but it wasn't that flat as this one. <laughs> and I, and I, I said, the one reason for that is it's not easy to be handsome. And Joe reacted. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. It would not be, I, I might say, I might say, it's just my, it's just my joke to say it's not easy to be handsome, but God has a purpose. At least I'm still alive. Amen? Every time I go to duty and I look after these patients, as I have told you, the longest patient we had in our ward was admitted way back 1978. Hallelujah. So if he was there since 1978, how many years was he in the hospital? 36. 36. Imagine he was lying there for 36 years. Somebody will get him up. Somebody will clean his, you know. 
Somebody will, will, will put him in the hoist and sit him in, in the chair, looking at the TV, doing nothing. <laughs> at least, if, if, even if I had the accident, if, even if my nose was damaged, at least I'm still alive. a purpose and everything but if you're weak in faith you would not be able to see the good thing the good part or the good side of everything that's why people are mad people are sad people are depressed because they cannot see the good thing or the good part of everything they can only say in all things god work for good to those who love god when things are good but when their circumstances change and so is their faith so, in all things, God worked for his purpose. So, for us to see God's purpose in everything. Okay, so, another aim for us to work with God in the fulfillment of his purpose. God has a purpose, God has a plan, but if you do not work according to God's purpose, he cannot do anything. Do you agree with me? Let's say, for example... All parents wanted our children to have a good future, wanted them to study well in, in college or in university that is for their own good. But if the children won't cooperate to the parents' plan, the parents can do anything. The parents cannot study on behalf of their children. You agree with me? And it is so with God's purpose. Okay, so again, our topic for today is God's purpose and everything. Okay, first. Samson loved a woman from the uncircumcised Philistines. Was there a purpose for that? What was the purpose again? To give an occasion for the Israelites to be freed from the Philistines. Who were the Philistines? Okay. <laughs> the uncircumcised what? <laughs> They are the enemies of Israel and they put the Israelites into bondage. Are you with me? Do you understand if I say they are in bondage of the, under the Philistines? Hello? Am I talking to anybody? Do you understand if I say the Israelites were in bondage under the Philistines? What does it mean then? Huh? Yeah, under authority? Under authority? Not just under authority? They have huh? They have conquered, okay? Please open the please open the window, the door. Huh? Not, not just rule. Slaves. They are slaves. Sorry, I, I, I heard you before, but I, I was just uh, confirming uh, one, one answer over there. Okay, if I, okay, let's say for example, you should know Agar. Anybody who know Agar? Okay, Agar was a slave woman of Sarai. Amen? And because Sarai wasn't able to give a child to Abraham, Sarai said, May you go to our slave Agar so that by the time she will bear a child for you, the child doesn't belong to her but belongs to Sarai. And that is what is meant by a slave. You are a possession of your master. It doesn't work like, like that these days. Amen. Okay, so I'll show you my point. Exodus chapter 23 verse 32. You shall... You shall make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest they make you sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Also, you shall destroy all the peoples whom the Lord your God delivers over to you. Your eyes shall, be no, shall have no pity on them, nor shall serve their gods. For that will, that will be a snare to you. God doesn't allow the Israelites. He commanded them not to marry with unbelievers. Are you following what I'm trying to say? And now here comes Samson. He loved a woman from the uncircumcised Philistines. Do you think 
that was pleasing to the Lord? No. But if you would see God's purpose, you will appreciate it. Why? Okay, Judges chapter 13 verse 5. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Samson's, Samson's mom used to be barren, baog. She didn't have any children at all. But God gave her a, a child, a son, in the name of Samson because Samson will be the deliverer of Israel. Deliver from where? From the bandage of Philistines. Okay, so here's what happened. But his father and mother did not know that it was of the Lord. Of course, if you are a Christian, it applies these days. God's words remains the same. If you believe on him, you should marry a believer as well. Why? If you marry a non-believer, you will have a problem because of the, your interest with your wife or husband. Are you with me? Pastor, I claim he will be converted. What if he won't be converted? You will be the one converted then. Does that make sense? Do I have to make it clear? If you are a Christian, good to those who are still single, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you are a Christian, you should, it should be your number one consideration. Is your boyfriend or girlfriend a Christian as well? Is he of the same faith? Is he of the same belief? If not, you will have problem in the future. Why? Because your relationship with the Lord is at stake. You will put on in danger your relationship. Just like uh, 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 a Filipina in Singapore uh, uh, asked for prayer. Pastor, could you pray for me that I could have a boyfriend? And then he told me, uh, she told me, Pastor, I already have a, bo a boyfriend, but he is a Muslim. If it's not of the same faith, do not consider it at all. Why? Muslim, they will convert you into their belief or into their religion. So that, what, that is what is meant or what is happening with Samson. He loved a, a woman from the uncircumcised Philistines. Okay? So his feeling was God-driven. Strange, isn't it? Well, he wasn't, it wasn't an accident or man's plan. Why? Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9, we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Some other translation says, we make our plans, but God directs his actions. Amen. We have our own plan, but God is as his own plan as well. So God was seeking an occasion to move against the Philistines, for at that time, the Philistines had dominion over Israel. So they were praying, okay? What happened in Israel? I'm not sure if it's here. Okay, it's here. In short, in everything, God has a purpose. We might not see that Samson's feeling to this uh, woman from, from the uncircumcised Philistines was from God, but you should widen your understanding. Amen? Okay? So this is the pattern in the book of Judges. Even in in, old, in the Old Testament, the pattern was God's people worship other gods. They will become slaves. They cry out to God and God will send a deliverer. Are you following? I told him to stay. He is not staying. There's nothing I can do. I pray. It's up to him. <laughs> Okay, I, I, are you getting my point here? If they worship Baal, if they worship idols, God will, God will uh, scatter them away, uh, scatter them abroad. They will be put to slavery. They will be oppressed. Then when they're oppressed, they will cry out to God and God will send them a deliverer. And Samson was one of them. 
If you have read Judges chapter 1 verse chapter 1 and chapter 2 for one occasion they 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 turned their back from God, they worship idols and they were in slavery for 14 years. The next time the it was longer. It was 22 years. Why? Because you have learned your lesson, lesson already. You should learn from it and you should not repeat you, the same mistakes. But my point here is, Samson was one of the deliverers. Samson married this woman. And guess what happened? He gave them a riddle, but the Philistines threatened to kill his wife. What was the riddle? Any idea? Oh, you don't read your Bible. Huh? Uh, something like that. <laughs> uh, please accommodate uh, Sister Cheryl and her husband, please. Thank you for coming. Okay, what was the riddle again? Okay, never mind. <laughs> we, will, we will consume our time if I have to, to wait until you remember the riddle. The riddle was something about the lion and the honey that came out of the lion. So when, when uh, this woman told his people, they said to Samson, what is sweeter than honey and what is stronger than lion? Are you following me? Oh my goodness. How about talking about gossips in the Philippines? Maybe you're updated. When it comes to the Bible, ano daw? <laughs> you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. So she was given to the best man. It, she married Samson, but the, the father of this Timnite woman, she, he gave it to the best man. So Samson was, Samson was how, how, would, how would you expect? I marry a, I'm a woman and then it was given to my best man? Oh, let there be world war. <laughs> so Samson was offended. Okay? So Samson... Uh, because he was offended, he went home. When he came back to, to his wife, the, the father of his wife doesn't allow Samson to go to his wife. And he gets mad. And what Samson did was, he burned their grain and vineyard by using 300 foxes. Imagine, it's not easy to catch a fox. But Samson caught 300 foxes, put uh, something to burn, and burned their vineyard. And they were, they were offended as well. So the Philistines killed his wife and her family. Are you following me? Anybody who have read what I'm talking about? Please raise your hands. If not, I will explain it one by one. <laughs> Only one have read it? My goodness. Huh? <laughs> huh? Just, just what? You're just shy. My goodness. Sa akin pa kay mahiya? Mukha na nga, bisaya na. <laughs> By the face alone, I, I, I'm from the province, so they should not be ashamed of me. I'm not even ashamed of my accent. Why should I be ashamed? At least I can speak English. I cannot language very well. <laughs> we've, been, we've known each other for quite a while. Why should we be ashamed, isn't it? We should not be ashamed. People are not even ashamed to post anything or everything in Facebook. Why should you be ashamed here? It's just a matter of interaction. At least I know, I, I know if you understand, if you have read what I'm talking about. Okay, so Samson took revenge and slaughtered many of them. So here comes the fulfillment of God's purpose. He took an occasion for Samson to start delivering his people. So he killed many of them. Their enemies were killed, which would lead to their freedom. Uh -uh. If you were an Israelite under the slavery of, of, of the authorities of the Philistines, and Samson are killing the Philistines, oh, you will be clapping your hands. Come on, make it fast, make it quick. We will be free tomorrow. Paglaban ang karapatan ng manggagawa. Hallelujah. <laughs> You are on strike already. <laughs> Makibaka. <laughs> okay, so this is what happened. The men, the men, see, nabibisaya na naman. Ano ba itong dila na pala? 
laging nabibisaya, bisaya talaga. So, the men of Judah arrested Samson and when he was delivered to the Philistines, he killed a thousand of them. Ah, if I would be, I would be Samson and I have killed a thousand, try me. I will add, add you to the thousand men I've killed. <laughs> okay, so unfortunately, God's purpose of delivering them wasn't fully fulfilled. Why? Because of Delilah. He judged Israel for 20 years. Do you know what is equivalent of a judge in, in their time? A judge is a king. After the judges regime, the Israelites ask for a king. So the equivalent of a judge is a king. In other words, Samson was a king for 20 years. It would be nice if the queen is a believer and he's working for the advancement of the kingdom, but unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. Amen. Okay, so Samson walked out from his purpose. In what way? Judges 16 verse 1. Now Samson went to Gaza and saw a harlot there and went into her. Bumigay. At di sa babae, bumigay. <laughs> Are you following me? Yes? Okay. Do you know why Samson was a deliverer or how was he consecrated for the Lord? He was a? Nazarite. And what does a Nazarite mean? No, 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 no combing of the hair? <laughs> no, no cutting of the hair and no, no shaving, no, huh? no combing. Parang si Jack, chin, lumabas lang, chinismis mo na. <laughs> no. no cutting of the hair, no shaving of the, 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 of the, of the beard and come on, no razor and come on. No? You're not really reading your Bible. No alcohol. <laughs> the angel of the Lord told the Samson's mom, you should not drink any liquor or alcohol because the child is a Nazarite to me. So he was consecrated. The bad thing nowadays, there are people who are not drinking, but they got a woman. Hindi nga uminom, may babae naman. What does it mean? Some other Christians, they don't have vices, they don't drink wine, they don't drink alcohol, but they have some weaknesses as well. Just like Samson, he wasn't drinking, but his weakness was he went into a harlot. How would you react when you saw me coming from Premier Inn and I, I was holding a lady and we just uh, we just checked out from Premier Inn and it wasn't Annabelle. For, for those who are newcomers, my wife's name is Annabelle and it wasn't my wife. Oh, how would you react? Ganyan ba ang pastor ng God Most High? Is that the pastor of God Most High? A womanizer? Is that true? My goodness, I, I told you, you've seen me. You're not asking already. I, one thing for sure that you would do is you will tell all the members of the church what you have seen. <laughs> Facebook, oh my gosh, I saw pastor coming from Premier Inn. Hallelujah. So Judges chapter 16 verse 4. Afterward, it happened that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. Loving the Timnite woman was from the Lord, but loving Delilah was definitely not from the Lord. Amen? You can fulfill God's purpose by cooperating, by working on his purpose, but if you go out 
from his purpose, you would not fulfill his purpose. Amen? Okay? So this time, his love was not on God's purpose. He loved Delilah and revealed his secret. Revealed his secret. Be careful with whom you reveal your secret. Especially those people who can talk other people to you because if they talk other people's lives to you, they will talk your life to other people as well. Ah, they say news have wings. They are carried out by people who are pail bearers, gossipers. And sometimes they will just put it in their Facebook status. <laughs> so he loved Delilah and revealed his secret. And you, you know what? When Samson revealed his secret and, and, and the Philistines overcome Samson, Delilah tormented him. Torture. It didn't say how did Delilah tortured Samson, but I'm telling you, you might <laughs> this has nothing to do with anybody else. They say marriage is the only war that you sleep with the enemy. <laughs> remember a friend of mine she said in her Facebook status all the problems of uh, women are coming from men excuse me I told her as well all the woes of a man comes from the woman <laughs> <laughs> the reason why men have woes because of the woman <laughs> does it make sense so Samson was tormented by Delilah. So it's not, do not be so sure of, of your loved ones, especially when you're not getting married yet or you're not married yet. Samson revealed his secret and his God's purpose was in danger, what came to an end by revealing his secret. And this woman tor tormented him, tortured him. So in Judges chapter 16, verse 9, then she lulled him to sleep on her knees and called for a man and had him shave off the seven locks of his head. Then she began to torment him and his strength left him. Oh, I would not allow somebody to torment me. He said, Mama, <laughs> it depends. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say for example of torment is removing the fingernails. That's a torment. Removing, pulling out the hairs one by one. That's a torment. Ano? <laughs> masarap doon? Bubunutan ng buhok? Iba siguro yung sinasabi mo, yung sinasabunutan yung buhok. Ba baka may ginagawa. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> Judges chapter 16 verse 20. And she said, the Philistines are upon you, Samson. So he awoke from his sleep and said, I will go out as before at other times and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had departed from him. You would be aware that the Lord is upon you, but you would not know that the Lord has departed from you. Let me ask you, is the Lord um, still with you at the moment? It's not a presumption? It's not an assumption? Or you might not know that the Lord has departed from you. If you are walking outside God's purpose in your life, the Lord would not be with you. There's no point. He's working in all things for his purpose to be fulfilled. And if you walk away from it, then 
doesn't make sense. Are you with me? Okay, so he was captured by his enemies. What did the Philistines do to Samson? It, it took his eyes out, okay? Judges chapter 16, verse 21. Then the Philistines took him and put his eyes, put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza. They bound him with bronze fetters and he became a grinder in the prison. Okay. Would that be easy? Taking your eyes out? My goodness. That could be life as well. Taking your eyes out could be taking your life out. And then, they, they put him with, uh, they bound him with bronze peters and became a grinder in the prison. In other words, the tendency of not doing God's purpose in your life is, we will be doing the enemy's purpose. Oh no, it's just like Nicole, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> are you with me? It's either you are doing God's purpose or the enemy's purpose. Whose purpose are you doing at the moment? God's purpose? Remember that Luke chapter 11 verse 23 says, He who is with me gathers with me, and he who does not gather scatters. So if you're not gathering, you are scattering. Which one are you doing? <laughs> Hopefully. Okay. Whose purpose are you fulfilling at the moment? Christians should not be spectators. Do you understand spectators? You are standing by watching somebody. So you should not be a spectator because you are a member of the body of Christ. You should edify the body of Christ because each member has a function in the body of Christ. So if you're not doing anything, you're just watching the workers of, the, the, of God in his vineyard, you're just a spectator. Hello? <laughs> Walang personalan. So everyone must function in Christ's body because we are called for according to his purpose. God has a purpose to each and every one of us. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10, God has given each member, each believer for the edifying of the body of Christ. So God has some, given something for you, for you to have something to do in his body. When it comes to preaching like this, Lots of people could not accept because so many Christians, they love the blessing, but they don't want responsibilities. God gave us bless blessings, but he also gave us responsibilities. Amen? Okay? All must be doing something to advance the kingdom of God. If not, if you're not doing something, you're just a spectator. Okay, so Samson's untimely death. He was brought uh, out of prison. That's out, not our. He was brought out of prison to entertain his enemies. Excuse me, uh, I tell jokes. I have a good sense of humor, but I'm not an entertainer, you know. Don't sleep if I don't make jokes. <laughs> I'm not an entertainer just to keep you awake. Okay, so he asked a lad to let him build the pillar that support the temple, and he begged God to have his vengeance for his eyes. God's purpose, he was a Nazarite, he was consecrated to God since from, he, he was conceived from the womb of his mom to be a deliverer of Israel, and now he, all he was praying was vengeance for his eyes. Hallelujah. What a selfish prayer. Lord, somebody criticized me. Ang kasakit na sana sila. Kulang na lang, kulangin mo sila. Some people are praying for their enemies, for the gossipers, for the backbiters to have illnesses or diseases. 
One thing they, they could not do because they're not allowed to do it is to witchcraft. To go to, uh, to, to witchcraft and, and <laughs> pray for the, for the curse of that somebody. Okay? So instead of delivering God's people, his concern now was selfish to take revenge. God once again strengthened him and killed. He killed more enemies than before. When his hands were on the pillars that support the temple, he prayed God, the strength from God came back to him and the temple went down and he killed many Philistines more than he killed before. But imagine for those 20 years, if it extended to 40 years, what a deliverance to the people of God. Amen? Okay? So in other words, untimely death is when you haven't fulfilled your purpose. Do not die yet if your purpose is still unfulfilled. Why? The reason we live is for God's purpose to be fulfilled. Amen? If you have fulfilled God's purpose, it's lovely to die. Why? Life was given to us to fulfill a purpose. When we fulfill God's purpose, it is good or perfect, lovely death. Psalm 116 verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious if you have fulfilled your purpose. If not, ang pasikip lang sa lupa to <laughs> sa mundo. <laughs> You're just adding to the earth's congestion if you're not fulfilling your purpose. Amen? Okay. Rehoboam. Ah, brother boy is not here. Do anybody here who, who know Rehoboam? Ah, I would be blessed if somebody know, knows Rehoboam. Huh? Solomon. Okay, sons of Solomon. Not just son of Solomon. He was the successor of Solomon, okay? So Rehoboam was Solomon's son who succeeded him as a king. The Israelites came to him, came, bisaya talaga, ano ba talaga? The Israelites came to him to ease the burden his father placed on the people. He gave the people three days for him to respond on their plea. And what happened? He consulted the old ones as, well, the young ones. Are you following? Yes? Okay? The old people said, you have to lighten the burden to have their loyalty. These people will serve you until they die as long as you will be considerate to them as well. But when he consulted the young ones, the young, one ad young ones advised him. He said, the finger, my finger is heavier than my father's hand. Heavier. Are you with me? Kayo nga dito? <laughs> Are you with me? In other words, he didn't listen to the old people's advice. He listened to his generation advice to make the burden worse. And guess what happened? This is what we can read in 2 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 15. So the king did not listen to the people for the turn of events was from God. That the Lord might fulfill his word. Imagine. It wasn't good to listen to his generation's advice because as a result, he did not have the service of the people and 11 tribes had their own kingdom. They chose Jeroboam to reign over Israel and, and Rehoboam has one tribe only. Gets? Okay? So, which he had spoken by the hand of Ahijah, the Shilonite to Jeroboam, the son of Nebat. This is what happened in 1 Kings chapter 11. Anybody here who have idea of what is happening in 1 Kings chapter 11? I've given you a clue. I would be impressed. You might be, you might be thinking, why is pastor asking brother boy? Why is he allowing brother boy to ask questions? At least there is an interaction and there is a, a two-way communication. Rather than just, I'm thinking, are they following me? Are, 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 they, are they getting what I'm trying to say? At least I would know. And now I know. You're not really reading your Bible because you're not, 
you're not familiar with what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay, so what happened in 1 Kings chapter 11 was Solomon had how many wives? A thousand wives. Grabe ka orabon ito si Solomon. Imagine a king with a thousand wives. No offense, Ian asked me, what is he gonna do with the thousand, thousand wives? One push here, one push there. <laughs> one night here, one night over there. It's, imagine a thousand wives. And guess what? These wives are unbelievers and he worship the wives, of the gods of his wives. And this is what happened. Therefore, the Lord said to Solomon, because you have done this and have not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded you, I will surely tear the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. Nevertheless, I will not do it in your days for the sake of your father David. I will tear it out on the hand of your son. However, I will not tear away the whole kingdom. I will give one tribe to your son for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen. For the Lord to fulfill this prophecy, the turn of events, so the king did not, King Rehoboam did not listen to the people for the turn of events was from God. In other words, in everything, even your minor mistakes, God has still a purpose. Man, pastor, I wandered away. I, I'm a backslider for so many years. I don't care. As long as you still live, God's purpose in your lives remains the same. And guess what? Romans chapter 11 verse 29, the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Did you get it? When it says irrevocable, it doesn't mean you didn't respond. It doesn't mean you didn't work for God's purpose. God's calling to you has changed. God's calling, God's gift are irrevocable. It will remain forever. Ang hina ng amen nyo. Amen. Okay, so where are we? Another example, the life of Joseph. The way you, you, you reacted to my sermon today is, oh, pastor, the sun is out. Wish we were in the park today. It just rained a while ago. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, the life of Joseph. He dreamt dreams. How many dreams? Two. Okay. He shared his dreams to his family, which made them indignant to him. Intended to kill him, if not for the intervention of Judah. His brother said, let's kill him and let's see what happened to his dreams. But Judah interceded because Judah is his full brother. Judah said, he is also our brother. Do not kill him. We will not kill him, but we will throw him into the pit. Okay, this is what happened. The, he took the, him out from the pit and he was sold as he was sold to the Ismailites. Are you with me? Okay? Then he became a slave, accused of raping his master's wife. If you were Joseph and you were in that pit, how would how would you feel? What's in your mind? Lintik <laughs> lang You would be seeking your own revenge if you do not see God's purpose in your life. I guarantee you of that. Amen? But was he seeking for revenge? No. no. Let's see what happened. He was in prison and interpreted dreams. And guess what happened? Genesis chapter 40 verse 14, he said to the, to the butlers, was it the butler? Yes. Because the dream of the butler came true and he was restored to his position. But Joseph told the butler, 
Remember me when it is well with you, and please show kindness to me. Make mention of me to Pharaoh and get me out of this house. Who would like to be in prison in a way? Do you think there was internet in prison at the time? No. Unlike these days, people will be freed from prison and they will commit another, another violation, another transgression just for the police to take them again to prison. Life in the prison here in the UK is good. Free food, you don't have to work, there's internet. Ano pa? Hanap mo. Asawa na lang, wala doon. <laughs> it's just a wife that you don't, they don't have in prison. Okay, but prison in, in Joseph wasn't, wasn't good. It was hell really. So, Joseph wanted to be out of prison because this butler was restored to his position. Do you think the butler remembered Joseph? Huh? He forgot Joseph. Okay? So he was totally forgotten until Pharaoh dreamt dreams. Does it sound familiar? People these days, when their circumstances change, they will forget you. And the next time they will remember you is they needed your help again. <laughs> Yes? Ooh, as if you, you cannot relate to what I'm saying. <laughs> okay? And it happened to Joseph. He became, and then when Pharaoh had a dream, nobody can interpret, so the butler remembered Joseph. And, uh, and the butler told Pharaoh, I, I, uh, I had a shortcoming. I forgot Joseph who interpreted my dream, and he could interpret your dreams as well. After interpreting the dream of Pharaoh, he became Pharaoh's right hand or second in command in Egypt. Amen. So his circumstances changed. From the pit, from the prison, now he is the right hand of Pharaoh. Wow. If you were the one in Joseph and you are now in second in command in Egypt, what are you thinking about your brothers? Revenge. Ah, if I was in Joseph, I could not guarantee that I will not take revenge. I could forgive them, but it would not be easy. I'm telling you, I'm just honest enough, you know. I'm not hypocrite. Oh, I love you. Kalimutan mo na. Forget it. Oh, forget it. <laughs> be honest, man. <laughs> It's not easy to forgive, but if you are able to see God's purpose in everything, you will not be offended. And this is what happened. Genesis chapter 45 verse 5, Joseph's brother came to buy rice. Whatever was it, no, no arguments, it was rice. <laughs> so, but now he told his brothers, but now, do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here for God sent me before you to preserve life. What a purpose. <laughs> the reason why Joseph wasn't offended, Joseph didn't took revenge while he was in prison or even think of taking revenge because he saw God's purpose. He told his, his brothers, you sold me here, but God sent me before you to preserve life. And I am telling you, the purpose of God's calling you today is to preserve the life of others. And Acts chapter 16, verse 31 says, if a man believes in me, the whole household will be saved if you work on God's purpose. Amen. As if you're shy as well. <laughs> you might say, oh, pastor, I go to church as well. But, well, it's not a guarantee that you go to church, you're saved. 
even if you go to a burn again church, it's not a guarantee that you're saved. It's an it, it, it's a personal relationship because after all, at the end of the day, uh, Matthew chapter seven verse twenty one says, "Not all who call to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who obey the will of my Father." Amen. Okay, so when Joseph, when 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 Jacob died, Joseph's brothers thought that that they, he would take revenge. So this is what we can read in Genesis chapter 50, verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil we did to him. So they sent messengers to Joseph saying, before your father died, he commanded saying, this you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please Forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to him, Do not be afraid, for I am in the place of God. But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day to save Many people alive. It is so nice to see God's purpose in everything. Amen? Last example. Okay? Verse 21, and carry on to say, Now therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And that is... That is one purpose for us here. The reason why we are in London is for us to be able to help our loved ones in the Philippines. But if you're just helping financially, you're not working for the for their salvation. What what does it what does it serve? Again, my favorite verse is in Mark chapter eight, verse thirty six, when Jesus said, "What does it gain a man if he profits or, or gain the whole world if he loses his soul?" Okay, last. God's purpose to humble the Israelites. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Am I speaking too fast? It's, it's okay. You pick up everything. Okay? Verse 4 your God garments did not wear out of on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. What's God's purpose? What's God's purpose for feeding them with manna for 40 years? No. Come on. Now I'm thinking, are they really listening to me? We have the PowerPoint already, and although my accent is not that good, you should be able to understand because we are of the same accent, you know? <laughs> Joke lang. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna. What was God's purpose? To humble them. Did you say this before? No. So God's purpose was to humble them. For how long was they was he feeding them with manna? Do you understand what is manna? Although Sister Rika know what is manna. Do you understand what is manna? Oh, not money. Manna. Not 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 meat. Not like mushroom. Actually, it will melt the, by the heat of the sun. So it will be there in the morning, but as the sun rises up, it will slowly melt down. Ima let's say, for example, that's tasty. Your breakfast will be tasty. Your lunch will be tasty. Your, your, oh, let's say bread. Oh, pastor, we're British. We're, we're eating bread. I'm not. I'm not Filipino. I'm Bisaya. <laughs> I eat rice a lot. <laughs> okay, so. Your breakfast is bread, your lunch is bread, your, your dinner is bread. The next day, the next week, the next month, the next year, for 40 years. 
Was there a liver spread? No. Was there peanut butter? No. Was there mayonnaise? No. Was there ham? No. No ham, no, no, no nothing. No nothing. <laughs> nothing at all, just bread, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Tomorrow, breakfast, lunch, dinner. The same bread. Why did it took for 40 years? Huh? Because they were not humble yet. If they humbled the first year, it would not reach to 40 years. See? Are you, do you agree with me? Okay. So the reason why it reached to 40 years, because God's purpose wasn't fulfilled yet, they're not humble enough. I prove you they're not humble. When they were in Egypt, they said, God, please help us. Free us from the oppression of the Egyptians. So God saw the oppressions of, of the Israelites and God freed them. When they were in the wilderness and they were, there was no food, they said, oh, we wish we were in Egypt. Tatutang ko na itong mga Israelites na to eh. Isn't it that it happens to us as well? When we were in the Philippines, Lord, please, please help me. Give me a visa to go to London. Oh, when the visa came, praise the Lord. And the work, work permit came, praise the Lord. When British citizen came, or the British passport came, praise the Lord. And now, when the weather changes, you keep complaining, I wish I was in the Philippines. <laughs> go home then. Nobody's holding you. <laughs> Are you getting my point? Okay, so ju not just to humble them, but to make them know that man shall not live on bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. It is the same purpose today, and God wanted you to know that man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from his mouth. Amen. And what does it mean? It means you cannot just work seven days a week. You cannot just sleep on your day off. You cannot just relax and go to the beach on the Sunday. It means you have to listen and read God's word. Because man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Amen? If you understand that, you could not sleep without reading God's word. Amen? If you sleep without reading God's word, I don't think you understand that. Especially if you are always in Facebook and you cannot read the Bible, you don't understand that. And you know what? I keep monitoring the, the views in YouTube. My goodness. My sermon, seven views. Why did I put the videos in YouTube? So that if you're not able to attend this Sunday, you can catch up. If you wanted to listen on it again, you can listen on it. You don't have to, to sit on it and listen. While you're ironing the clothes, you can listen to the video. While you are cooking, while sleeping, you cannot, while lying and you cannot sleep, why not listen to the videos? And then when I check, seven views, hallelujah. Who is this seven? word, if you don't like me because you don't like my accent, fine. <laughs> you can listen to Miles Monroe, you can listen to Joel Austin. If you like prosperity, then listen to Joel Austin. If you like healing, then listen to, to Benny Hinn. If you like warfare, listen to Maurice Rollo. There's lots of, lots of preachers. You, can, you have plenty of choices, really. But the fact 
that you are not listening to, you are not watching my videos, you are not watching any other videos as well. Am I right? Okay, so your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. Uh, just a good illustration. I'm almost finished. Just a good illustration. <laughs> Jonathan asked me where did I buy my, my previous shoes. <laughs> I'm not sure if he, he was serious on it or, or he just making, <laughs> making a, 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 what is this, a, a sarcastic question. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. That was old enough, so I'm not wearing it. But I, I wore it maybe for five years. When I went to Kenya, there was all mud on that shoe. And, and now I have this, this uh, seven months. Maybe I appreciate it. It's still shiny. Next year, I still use it. Maybe for five years, I'm still using it. But for 40 years, my goodness. <laughs> maybe the number one. If I were wearing the same shoes for 40 years, maybe on the 20th year, kawawa naman to si pastor, wala na pang bilhin sapatos. <laughs> you would be thinking and you would pity me for not able to buy another shoes. It's not easy to wear the same shoes for 40 years. But God humbled them. If God is withholding something, He's not answering particular prayers to you, He got a purpose. Do not get offended. Do not turn your back from the Lord. God has a purpose. Amen. Ah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if you remember Pastor Romel's story. There was a missionary. He went to a. He went on a mission to a particular island. On his way to the island, he had the accident, and on the accident, he lost his small finger. And he was asking God, "What's your purpose for me for, to have an accident?" When he came to the island, the the, the, the tribe of that island captured him and they wanted him to offer to their God. No, upon, upon checking him, he doesn't have a small finger because he had the accident. And, and, and the people on that island decided not to offer them him because it was their practice. If they offer to their God, it should be perfect. So he wasn't offered because he doesn't have a, a small finger. In other words, in everything, God has a purpose. Amen? Okay. So approximately 3 million died in the wilderness without experiencing the land of milk and honey because they failed to humble themselves. I'm almost finished. Isaiah 14, 24. The Lord of hosts has sworn, as I have planned, so shall it be. And as I have purpose, so shall it stand. God is determined to fulfill his purpose no matter what. He will continue to work out his purpose even if you refuse. The longer you refuse, the longer we suffer. Challenge. Can you see God's purpose in everything? Amen. Can you see why, why it's raining today? Because if it wasn't raining, we are in the park today. <laughs> I'm just joking. So, will you insist your own dis purpose despite knowing his purpose for our own good? In all things, God works for good to those who love him, to those who are called according to his purpose. Conclusion, Romans 8, 28 again. And we know that in all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Your wishes, your desires might not be happening. The reason behind, because God wanted his purpose to be fulfilled in your lives. I invite you to stand up. Mm -hmm.